For chapter 10, we are going to look at different ways to view our worksheet, um, ways that we can work in two different windows at the same time. Um, we're also going to look at uh, ways to print different things um, and uh, just how to set up some printing options. So chapter 10 is kind of low key as far as um, equations go. We are going to play with a solver and with a um, <clears throat> a goal seeker, which are, are equation oriented. Um, but most of this is viewing and printing. So we're going to open a worksheet that's already been created for us. So again, this worksheet can be downloaded from your textbook or you can pull it um, out of the canvas. It's in the lesson area as well. Oops, wrong folder. So we're looking for EA10D1. And what we have here is a we're a workbook that has three different tabs. We have a purchases budget, we have a cash budget, and we have a CVP analysis. Okay, so we're going to start on our cash budget tab, and we're going to sell J6. So we're going to fill in, and if you look at this cash budget, and this kind of caught me off guard, this is starting with quarter four, quarter three, quarter two, and quarter one. So it's kind of starting a little backwards. Um, to how you would read left to right. So we're going to go to cell J6 and we're going to type in 23,000. And then we're going to go to J8. And step 3 on page 303 gives us a whole list of numbers to type in into these boxes. So go ahead and take a few minutes and type those in. Okay, once you have those typed in, that drops us at J14, and we're going to type in equals sum of, and we want to add from J8 to J13. <clears throat> then we're going to go to J16 is asking us what our total cash available. So that one is going to be J6 plus, J14, so we're taking our beginning balance plus our total cash receipts, gives us our total cash available of $240,200. We're going to go to J18, where we're going to type in the numbers for the things we're going to subtract. So we type those in. I think I lost track of what I was doing here. Let's see, 103, 846, 130, or 13, 2, and 1800. Okay, so now we're in J22, so we're going to do another sum. We wanted to add those numbers that we need to deduct, so we're, we're grabbing J18 to J21. Gives us our total disbursements, total money paid out, 202, 600. And now in our ending cash balance, we're going to take J16, our total cash available, and subtract J22, our total cash disbursements, which gives us 37,600. <clears throat> So this is our ending cash balance, this 37600 So our beginning cash balance for quarter two is going to equal our ending cash balance from quarter one. Okay, so we just type in equals J24. And then on step eight, it gives us the data for the next set of cells. Now, we can do this a couple ways. Again, we can copy this and paste it into each of these four cells individually, or you can click and drag, keeping in mind that they have these 
cells in the middle that you have to go through and delete the formula that you stuck in there. They have those spacer cells. So I, I did the fill handle, click and drag, and just delete the spacer cells. Or you can use your copy and paste, however makes sense to you. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with 16. We're going to copy and paste it or fill it over and then take out the ones you don't need. Okay, step 11 gives us the numbers for um, H18. So we can fill those in. Whoops. And then again, same thing with these equations. Fill them over or copy and paste them, whichever works for you. And the same up here for H6, because we want this to equal what the previous one equals. So this one should equal H. 24, this one should equal F24, and of course they're the same right now because there's no data in here to change them. Okay. Now if we go to page 304 at the top, step 14, it gives us the data to fill into these boxes. So we can go ahead and do that. So take a minute. And enter this data in. Once you have the data in, you'll see these numbers at the top are starting to change. Step 15, we're going to look at freezing rows and columns. Now, sometimes when you have a, a really, really large worksheet, um, you'll need to keep like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three at the top while you scroll down in order to keep track of where, what numbers are where, okay? So we want to scroll all the way up to the top so we can see everything, and we're going to go to cell C6, and C6 is kind of that, that corner between our headings and our data. If we come up here to the top, we're going to go to View, and in the View um, tab, there's a section called Windows, and we're looking for the one that says Freeze Panes, and just click on the top one that just says Freeze Panes. It says Keep Row and Column Visible While the Rest of the Worksheet Scrolls. So if I click here, and I scroll down, <clears throat> you can see that the top of my screen is staying still as I scroll. Okay, The same thing happens left and right. Um, not that it matters. There we go. Um, so if we had more data over here, we would use the left and right scrolling as well. We're freezing the headings so we can still see what numbers um, go with which headings. Go ahead back to freeze panes and click unfreeze panes. And this time we're going to go back in that box and we're only going to freeze the top row. Okay, because in our case we don't have data that goes that way. So once you go and uh, click on freeze top row, oh, for some reason mine does not want to work at the current moment. Oh, I'm going to unfreeze and try again. Freeze top row. What happens is it holds on to City Music World and it scrolls everything else. Okay. Go ahead and go to unfreeze panes. This we're to look at is a split window. Sometimes you have two different um, Excel workbooks that you're working with and you need to look at them both at the same time. 
So you do what's called a split window. We should still be in cell C6 and still in the view tab in the window section, there's a button that says split. When we click split, it's going to split the window right down where we um, had our box. So you can see as we scroll at the bottom, it's scrolling through all of the data. If we come up to the top as we scroll, it's scrolling through the exact same data. So you're looking at the data in two different windows. So let's say we wanted to look at what was being added whoops, and what was being subtracted at the same time. Okay, and you can change how big these are as well. We're going to take this, this vertical bar, this gray one, and drag it all the way over there because we really just need the top and the bottom. Okay, so scroll the top so you can see the add. You can see where it says add. And scroll the bottom so you, oops, so you can see where it says less. Okay. We're going to go to cell D8, which is this 107200. Change it to 108200 and see what happens at the bottom. So when you changed it, not only did it change at the top, but it also altered the numbers in the bottom window. Okay. We're going to go ahead and undo that change and put the numbers back to where they were. And we're going to turn this split off. So go ahead and come up here and click on split and that will turn it off. We can also view them in two different windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to create almost like a second file of this worksheet. So we're going to go right here to where it says new window. And when we click new window, it opens the, the exact same document into a second file. Okay. Go back into view and we're going to click view side by side. If you have this come up, you're going to choose the budget and then click OK. So now we have a budget at the top and a budget at the bottom. And as you scroll through, they're scrolling at the same time. Okay. Right here, there's a button that says synchronous scrolling. If we click that one and turn that off, now we can scroll one one way and one the other way. Okay. Now in the bottom window, in the top window, make sure you can, um, you can see row one. We want to be able to see where it says City Music World. Actually, scroll down so you can see the data. In the bottom window, go to cell J6, where it says 23,000. We're going to change that to 25,000. And before you press Enter, if you look up at the top, it's starting to change up there. And when you press Enter, it makes the changes in both windows because the windows are still connected. Okay, click undo to undo that. Now, if you'll notice when you created these two windows, one of them says budget one and one of them says budget two. We're going to close this one that says budget two, but first let's turn off our view side by side. Okay, it automatically put us in a budget two, so we're going to close this one and then it just leaves us here in this plain budget one. In the view box, in the view tab, we're going to go to the zoom section and click on the picture of the magnifying glass that says zoom. And where it says custom, we're going to change that to 150. Okay, so we can go back to where we were before. Flipping over to page 307, the next thing we're going to look at is printing a spreadsheet. So come up here and go to file print. We're not going to send anything to the printer, but we are going to use this preview screen so you can see what it looks like when we do print things. In the settings area over here on the left, we're going to find where it says normal margins. Okay, and if you click that box, then you can change them. We're going to click and narrow. So when we did that, it just moved our words closer to the edge of our page. Okay, go ahead back to your regular view. And we're going to go to page layout, orientation, and change it to landscape.
when you do that, if you scroll over to the right, you can see a dotted line here that shows us where our page cutoff is. I'm going to go back to File, Print, and then you can see that we flipped the paper sideways. Okay. Good. Back to your regular window. In your page layout section, there's a size button. Click that size button. In some companies, they print on larger paper. If they have these huge spreadsheets, they can print them on larger pieces of paper, like legal size paper. And if you scroll down, don't click on any of them, but scroll, and you can see all the different shapes and sizes of paper. You can also create one. If you click more paper sizes, don't click on it. But if you click on more paper sizes, you can create a specific size. I know I print on um, index cards for my students, so and that's not an option. So I have to create a specific size of paper in order to do that. Also in here, we're going to go over here to the left and click on the word margins. And here we can change our margins as well. So we're going to change them back to normal. And we're going to change the orientation back to portrait. Our next step, we're going to click A1 and go down to J16, which stops at cash available. And click on the one that says print area. And we're going to set the print area. So now we're telling the computer that this is our print area. This is what we want to print. So if we go to file print and we look at our print preview, we can see that it stops at total cash available. Okay. But we do see that it cuts off quarter one. So we can come down here to the bottom. It says no scaling. And we can choose fit columns on one page. And you'll notice there's also a fit rows on one page. So click on fit columns on one page. And it fits on one page. Still in here, we can go into our portrait orientation and click landscape. And now we can see everything. Okay, going over to the bottom of page 309, we're going to go to, click our back arrow here, we're going to go to, we should be on our cash budget tab, and we're going to select A1 to A3, and we're going to turn off their merge and center. So come up here and click on home, and click on merge and center to turn those off. And I'm going to show you why in just a minute. On the top of page 310, going to the page layout tab, there's a, an area here called Scale to Fit, and where it says Width, we're going to say Automatic. Okay. I'm going to go to cell E1. What we're going to do is we're going to stick some page breaks in here so that each quarter prints on a separate page. Okay. So once we're at E1, we're on the Page Layout tab. There's a button that says Breaks, and we're going to choose Insert Page Break. And we're going to do the same thing in G1. So click G1, insert page break, I1, insert page break. Go to A3, and we're going to change this to say four quarters ending in 2017, as opposed to for the year ended in a date. We're going to highlight A1 to A3, I'm sorry, A1 to D3. And merge on your merge and center button. Don't click on the button, click on the arrow next to it and click merge across and then click the center button. If you just click on the merge and center button, it's going to make the second two lines disappear. Okay. Come up here and click on file print. And we can see that quarter four is on this page. If you come down here to the bottom and go to the next page, you can see that each quarter is on its own page, which is what we wanted to do. Okay, go ahead back. Now, when we looked at that, we also didn't have any titles on any page except the first one. So we're going to go to Page Layout. And it says Print Titles. Click on the Print Titles button. Where it says Rows to Repeat at the top, click there. And then highlight rows one through three. So it should say dollar sign one colon dollar sign three. Columns to repeat at the left. We want column A. 
However, when we did that, it selected A, B, and C, and D because um, rows 1, 2, and 3 are merged and centered. So in your box over here on the right, we're going to change that D to a B. So we just get columns A and B. Click OK. Now go into your file print window. So this is exactly what page one looked like before. If we click the next button, now we see that those columns and, and row headings appear on each page. Okay, go ahead back. And now we're gonna switch over to our purchases budget. Now our purchases budget, we need to enter our data. So go to cell C5 and we're putting in 482,400. C6 gets 50,000. C7, we're going to put in a function, a sum function to add those two together. And again, we use the sum function in case we want to stick another a row in there and add another number in there. C8 is going to be 12,700. C9 is going to be our total inventory required minus our beginning inventory which is C8. Okay, so go into your page layout button. There's a section called Sheet Options, and we want it to print the headings. So click on where it says Headings, click Print. And then we're going to go back into our Print Preview box, and you'll see that when you do that, it prints the A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. It prints the headings, the actual numbers and, and letters that go around your column. Okay. Now, if we wanted to print more than one worksheet, so we're clicked on the Purchases bu budget right now, hold down your Control key, click on your Cash budget, and then go into File Print. And if we look through these pages, we can see that we're actually printing both worksheets. Okay. In the settings section over here on the left, we're going to go to the word page setup here at the bottom and go to the sheet tab and put check mark in the box that says grid lines. Click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to show all of the lines on our pages as well. So if we go back to the other ones, you can see that we're going to end up printing all of those lines. OK, go ahead back. The next thing we're going to look at on page 313, and please read the, the information on the pages in between these steps, is we're going to look at using <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to look at using goal seek and a solver. And this goal seek thing is actually pretty cool. The solver is too, but at first I like the goal seek one. If you click on CVP analysis number one, we're going to work in this sheet. We're going to enter some data. So F6 is going to say 100, F7 is 85, and D9 is 130,500. Okay, we're going to go to cell D6, and in D6, we're going to type in equals dollar sign B, dollar sign 13, times F6. So what we're doing is we're taking the number of units sold multiplied by how much they are per unit. Now, there's no number in B13 right now. Okay, we're going to do that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and press enter. Now, D7 is going to be the exact same thing. So we're going to copy this one. So click on that one, Control C. Go to D7, but this time, go to your Home tab. Click your Paste button. We're going to choose the one that says Formulas and Number Formatting. So it's the third one over. It has the percentage sign and the F of X sign. So click on that one. And it pasted our formulas and numbers. In cell D8, we're going to equals D6 minus D7. So we're going to subtract the sales revenue, the money we have coming in, minus our variable costs. 
and press enter. We're going to copy that one over to cell F8 in the same fashion. We want that copy formulas and numbers. Oh, nope, I'm sorry, we just want copy formula. We're going to go to F9 is going to equal D9 divided by B13. So our fixed cost per unit is going to equal what our total fixed costs are divided by how many units we have. And we get an error message because it's trying to divide by zero at the current moment. And that's okay, just leave that error message there. It wants us to put this in accounting format, so we're going to click on the dollar sign. D10, our net income, equals D8, our contribution margin, minus D9, our fixed costs. We're going to copy this one, paste it over to F10, but we're only pasting the formula. And again, you're going to get an error message. Now, this is where the goal seat comes in. Okay, push your escape key to turn off your copy thing. Click on D10. And we have a data tab up here. So click on your data tab. Your textbook says forecast, but mine says data tools. Um, I think it depends on which version of Excel you have. So you're going to go in this data tool section or the forecast section. There's a button that says what if analysis. Click on that one and click on the word goal seek. Now, this is asking us to find the goal. This is asking us to find the break-even point. So we want cell D10, our net income, and where it says two value, you're going to type in zero because we want break-even. How many things do we have to sell in order to break even? So we want D10 to equal zero by changing cell B13, by changing how many units we're going to sell. Click OK. And this is really cool. It's going to go through and figure out the answer for us. So this Excel spreadsheet just figured out our break-even point. We have to sell 8,700 units in order to break even. Okay, click OK. Now we're going to create a new tab down here. So come down here to CVP Analysis 1 and right-click on it and go to Move or Copy. We're going to move it to the end and we're going to create a copy. So we're just going to reproduce this tab. Okay, so now we have a second one. I'm going to right click on this one and rename it. We're going to take out the two and change it to CVP analysis number two. And press enter. So now we're going to do this what if analysis again. We're going to do a different one, however. So click on what if analysis and go back to your goal seek. So what if D10, okay, we want our net income to equal $12,000. That's our goal is to make a net income of $12,000 and by changing B13. Okay, so how many units do we have to sell to make $12,000? Click OK. And it tells us we need to make we need to sell 9,500 units to make $12,000 in net income. So click OK. Now the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we have a specific um, analysis tool installed on our computer. So come up here to File. And we're going to go to Options, and again, my computer is from a school district, so while I do this, I might get some error messages that don't pop up on your screen. On the left, we're going to click on Add-ins. And on the right, we want to find the one that says Solver Add-in. Okay, Mine, the first time I did it, was found under here, under Inactive Applications. So find that Solver Add-in. If you can't see that, then down here at the bottom, you may need to switch this one to Excel add-ins and click Go. And this is where I get the error message. You want to find that solver add-in and just make sure that it's under Active. If it's not, then you're going to have to click on it under Inactive and then click OK. And then it's going to install it. Okay. So this box should pop up. You can put a check mark in the solver add-ins and click OK. And then once it installs, you should have this solver add-in over here. 
So before we use that, we're going to right click on our CVP analysis number two, move or copy, move it to the end, create a copy, and rename it number three. Now, again, we should still be on cell D10. And going over here to this analysis section, click on the solver button. And we get a box to appear. So by changing variable cells, I'm going to drag this over here to the right a little bit. So by changing, we want our set objective to be D10. By changing variable cells. So by changing cell F6, and F6 is our sales revenue, I'm sorry, F6 is our sales revenue per unit. So by changing how much we charge per unit, comma, F7, and by changing our variable costs, comma, D9, by changing our fixed costs. If we were to change, have the ability to change all of these numbers, click Add down here. And we're going to type in some constraints, okay? So dollar sign D dollar sign 9. If D9 was greater than or equal to 129,000. So D9 is our fixed costs. If we had the ability to make D9 greater than or equal to 129,000, Click OK. We're going to add another one. And if you look at steps 23, it gives us a bunch that they want us to add. So F6, dollar sign F, dollar sign 6, is, oh, I lost it, is less than or equal to 105. Okay. So F6, our sales revenue, has to be less than or equal to 105. I'm going to click Add. The next one is F7. If F7 is greater than, whoops, greater than or equal to 83, so F7 is our variable costs, I'm going to click Add, F8, is less than or equal to F6 multiplied by 0.18. So they want F8, our contribution margin of $15, to be less than or equal to F6, our cost per unit, times 18%. That's the last one, so I'm going to click OK. So we've put in all of these constraints. We're allowing it to change these three numbers. However, these three numbers, these actually four cells, have to have certain constraints to them. Okay, Click Solve, and we, so we've given it a problem to solve. And it says, the solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. So we're going to go ahead and keep our solver solution and click OK. So our solution has given us different numbers in these areas. And it says by changing these things, by charging another $5 per unit, by changing our contribution margin, by changing our fixed costs, okay, we could increase our net income. So over here, we had increased our net income to 12, our net income was $12,000 by selling 9,500 units. By increasing and changing some of our costs and our, our sales revenue, we just increased our net income to $50,550. So you can see where this solver, this solver can come in handy to solve those what if, you know, what if we did this equations, okay, to kind of maximize our company's profit. Okay, and that's the end of chapter 10. So at this point, you can go ahead and finish up your assignment. Have a great week.